Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we have come to the third Sunday of Advent. Today is the 17th of December as well. As we have mentioned earlier, December 17th marks the second part of Advent in which we begin the direct or proximate preparation for the feast of the nativity of the Lord. The first part as i have said in the last two reflections is dealing with the second coming of the son of god being the third sunday of advent the thought of the second coming still lingers although it is the 17th of december from tomorrow the characters who prepare directly for the nativity will be introduced for example joseph mary zechariah elizabeth etc since the aspects of the first part remains the second reading will again deal with the second coming it will speak of the attitudes to be assumed while awaiting the second coming the text is first thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 24 the first letter to thessalonians is the first of the documents of the new testament St Paul the apostle must have written this letter in AD 50 or 51 if that is so the letter is written almost within 20 years of the death of Jesus this letter of five chapters deals with a few significant aspects of christian living it gives a glimpse of a christian church in those very first decades Although the letter deals with different topics what is significant in this letter is its eschatology this aspect of theology is seen in chapter 4 verse 13 to chapter 5 verse 11 this portion can again be divided into two parts 413 to 18 and 51 to 11 of course both the parts deal with eschatology in the first part 413 to 18 st paul disagrees with some of those who thought at that time that the dead will in some way be disadvantaged when the lord comes the second time and we who are alive will be more blessed than the dead for we shall see the lord coming in the air in glory and splendor which the dead will not witness Paul's own words are like this for this we declare to you by the word of the lord that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the lord will by no means precede those who have died this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 15 as i have mentioned in the earlier reflections The presentation here of the second coming is in apocalyptic categories which was a way of speaking prevalent at that time. This is all the more clear in the next verse in the phrases like cry of command archangel's call sound of god's trumpet etc. At the basic creed is to be found in 414 where it is said for since we believe that jesus died and rose again even so through jesus god will bring with him those who have died if the lord is to come in the manner said above paul answers then the question of the thessalonians as to when it will take place in the next section that is chapter 5 verses 1 to 11 however Paul does not address the question of its when he rather stresses of the how of it the lord will come as a thief he will come at an unexpected time as it is also the picturing in the gospels hence we need to be highly vigilant we are the children of light not that of night hence we will be able to be awake now as the letter ends in chapter 5 paul adds 
and exhortation so that the community may be always prepared for the second coming that's our second reading today that is chapter 5 verses 16 to 24 now this very second reading could be said to have two parts an admonition part at first in verses 16 to 22 and the second part in verses 23 and 24 a benedictory wish of paul that monetary portion reads thus rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of god in christ jesus for you do not quench the spirit do not despise the words of prophets but test everything hold fast to what is good abstain from every form of evil so this is verses 16 to 22 these little bits of admonition reflect what is to be followed in christian life especially in view of the second coming christians are a people of joy they are filled with joy because they know that jesus christ has conquered all evil and darkness and that they share in it if the second coming is not simply a tragic end of the world but the fullest manifestation of the victory of christ it will not be something to be frightened about but to be rejoiced about and that joy can already be enjoyed by the christian today praying unceasingly giving thanks is a way of being a christian but to pray unceasingly does not mean to be fully contemplative all the time or be saying short prayers continuously it means to live a life which has aspects of prayer dietrich bonhoeffer protestant pastor and theologian who was martyred in the concentration camp at auschwitz in the second world war in his book life together wrote thus about the prayer of a christian the unity of prayer and work the unity of the day is found because finding the you of god behind the it of the day's work is what paul means by his admonition to pray without ceasing the prayer of the christian reaches therefore beyond the time allocated to it and extends into the midst of work it surrounds the whole day and in so doing it does not hinder the work it promotes work affirms work gives work great significance and joyfulness thus every word every deed every piece of work of the christian becomes a prayer not in the unreal sense of being constantly distracted from the task that must be done but in the real breakthrough from the heart it to the gracious you now here paul exhorts not to quench the spirit and to test everything one has to have the passion of acting in accordance with the promptings of the spirit at the same time one has to be careful and be weighing the options or be testing the options which is called discernment one has to discern what is really true useful and helpful it is the holy spirit who instills in us good intentions but we need to learn to discern them in a spirit of prayer pope francis has been insistently telling that in the synodal gatherings of the church what is required very much is discernment earnest prayer is indispensable for that it is in an ambience of prayer that discernment happens the second part of benedictory wishes reads thus may the god of peace himself sanctify you entirely may your spirit soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ the one who calls you is faithful and he will do this this is 1 thessalonians chapter 5 verses 23 and 24 the christian should not think that he or she 
would be able to bring out by one's own strength all that has been advised above one cannot accomplish anything without the help of god without his grace of which paul is sure that god will do it paul qualifies god as the god of peace and of faithfulness god is not one who gives only orders he is one who strengthens the believer from within to execute his admonitions at the coming of jesus christ god will surely keep everyone sound and blameless in spirit soul and body pneuma sike and soma in greek that means the integral person will be protected with all one's faculties christian life is one of overflow of graces accordingly one can adorn it with beautiful virtues I mean